Right, well, it is time for another video. I seem to be averaging about a video a month. Uh, that's a little less than I had wanted. I kind of wanted to do maybe a couple of videos a month. But, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be sustainable. It doesn't seem to be realistic. I just kind of do these when I have time, and unfortunately, lately, I haven't had a lot of time. Um, I've had a lot of, a lot of things have come up. I, I've, it feels like my military schedule has increased. I'm, I'm doing a lot more because I'm now, I'm, I'm, with, I'm an NCOIC now. I actually have been for a few months, but um, an, an NCOIC, for those unfamiliar with the parlance, it's a non-commissioned officer in charge. It means I'm a sergeant who's in charge of a particular section. And with that comes a lot of extra responsibilities and stuff like that. So you can't just be like some, you know, dumb guy that just shows up and does what he's told and then goes home, doesn't have to think about it. I kind of have to keep my head in the game all the time. And it's been this way for, for a while now, but I don't know. It's just, as I get older, it's starting to catch up to me. It's like, you know, it's like when you build up a lot of, mud on the underside of your car you know pretty soon you have to you have to wash it out otherwise your your car just doesn't go as fast anymore so I, i'm kind of getting that feeling so i don't know i've been playing with the idea of retiring i've got the years for it um but the thing is that i actually like it i i like i like the army stuff i love it i i've been doing it for for years and years and years and i feel very comfortable at home there and of course, with Bohica Blues, you know, I've found I've got something to talk about. I've got something to relate to. I I can uh, make these cartoons and stuff. But um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of want to do other things. I've been doing Bohica Blues for, gosh, eight, nine years now or something. And I, I just kind of want to do other things. I, I used to do Bohica Blues twice a week. I tried doing three times a week. That was unsustainable. Twice a week was a bit of a stretch, but I was able to do it. And then when I wrapped up the main story, I went to three times a month. Three times a month, uh, I, I release comics on the 1st, the 10th, and the 20th. And that has freed me up to do a lot of new projects. Of course, the side effect of that has been that I want to do more. <laughs> I want to do more other things. I want to do more than, than just Bohica Blues. So I've kind of been toying with the idea of backing down Bohica Blues to twice a month and releasing on the 1st and the 15th so that I can concentrate on other projects. The big project that I'm working on, of course, is a reboot of my old science fiction story, Empires. And I'm, I'm really raring to go on that. I, I've been, I thought I was going to be working on that uh, sometime last year. And we've had a bunch of, a bunch of things come up, you know. Um, uh, we had a water heater leak in the house, and it, it created kind of a disaster situation. We had to have the house cleaned out with a disaster response crew, and then it led to well, what the hell, we've got all the furniture out of the house and they're ripping up the wooden floors, so let's do a remodel. And the remodel is going to be finished pretty soon. Uh, in this time, I've adopted a new dog, and I had this dog for a couple of months, and then I just had COVID. I just got over that about a week ago. <laughs> in other words, my plate's full. My plate is very full. And even the three times a month Bohica Blues thing, I sometimes find myself thinking, oh man, I, I just want to set this aside for a bit. Um, I'm working on a lot of stuff for Empires. Some of the stuff I'm working on is so geeky and so nerdy. Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm starting to write a thing about like the development of... Central Alliance Naval Doctrine, Space Naval Doctrine, and and um, the development of uh, the Central Alliance Army and stuff. And <laughs> God, I I feel so nerdy just saying it out loud, but I love this stuff. I eat it up. Um, you know, like things for me, they ha there has to be a reason why it is the way it is. You know, like why does the 
Starship Enterprise have this? Why does the Federation do that? Or why does the Rebel Alliance do this? Why does the Empire do that? You know, or why are the Cylons like this? And, you know, I, I kind of want to know why things are the way they are when I love a, a setting, especially a science fiction setting. In science fiction and fantasy, you know, you have to build the world. You know, you have to explain, you know, like, what is Hogwarts? You know, what is the Jedi Academy? What is what is all this stuff? So I really get into that. So, and of course, empires. You know, like like a lot of science fiction, fantasy. It, there's there's allegory to the real world. So I need to understand myself where that allegory comes from, why that allegory is the way it is, and, and how to develop it. So. So anyhow, yeah, so I'm working on crap like Central Army Doctrine, stuff that no one's ever going to read. Um, but but I, I, I kind of want to know it. I need to know it. It's just it's mostly for myself. And I'm not going to write like a like a 300-page in-depth thing. It's probably going to be like, you know, four or five pages or something like that. And then it'll be just reference material. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, that's that's where my head is at. That's where my mind that's where my mind is at. That's how I roll. So, uh, but I'm working on that, and this is going to be a lot of stuff on Patreon. You're going to see a lot of this stuff on Patreon. There's a a um, a, a novella that I'm working on uh, that's being published on Patreon in in parts. It'll be eight parts. It's called Breaking the Shell, and it's about a uh, young alien woman who joins the army. She finds her life going nowhere, and so she joins the army. And she goes through basic training, and she kind of breaks out of her shell. And it's, you know, I, I wrote it years ago, like over a decade ago. And it's kind of more of an exercise now. It's not, it's not, I don't know if it's really a compelling story with like a plot and character development and all this kind of, I mean, there is character development because I'm, I'm showing her coming of age. It's, a, you know, just a classic coming of age story. But um, it's kind of more of just like a, you know, how to go to basic training in the Central Alliance Army. <laughs> so in a way, it's, it, it kind of dovetails a bit with the doctrine. Um... It's based, of course, on my own actual experiences uh, in, in the Army back in the late 80s. That's the closest I'm going to come to dating myself. But the military, the Army, has changed a lot since then. And we did things differently back then. Um, there was still a, a really gruff you know, like almost brutal, you know, psychologically brutal um, stuff done by the drill sergeant. And that's because at the time, the army was still still kind of coming out of that mindset of dealing with conscripts. Because we used to have the draft. The United States used to have the draft. We, and we drafted people, even after World War II was done, even after Korea was done, um, uh, between Korea and Vietnam, and even after Vietnam, it was a lottery draft. So not everybody had to do it but if they picked your number you had to join the army and so you had all these people joining the military that didn't want to be there and they were forced to be there and they kind of had to be pounded into shape because you can't say oh you know you should respect the institution you should respect the heritage you should respect the history uh all that kind of stuff because they didn't give a crap about that stuff it was uh it was an annoyance to them it, it intruded on their lives so you had a lot of people there that were probably more inclined to be troublemakers than to be, you know, loyal, good working soldiers who wanted to be there voluntarily. So there was a, you know, a, a, a brusqueness to it, a, a definitely a lack of politeness. <laughs> um, and the Central Army, one of the things about the Central Alliance Army is that it relies on a lot of conscripts. Uh, probably about anywhere from 20 to 40 percent of the Central Alliance Army in empires is conscripts because of the nature of joining the Central Alliance. A planet can join the Central Alliance and they have conscription on that planet, but part of the treaty says you will allow them to do Central Alliance Army service. 
So there's a lot of people there that are like, oh, you know, to hell with my home planet. My home planet conscripts me to hell with them. I'll just join the Central Alliance and uh, get all the benefits. So, you know, and, and this is stuff I'm going to flesh out. But, but you can see, you can kind of see if, you, if you're still following along after all this rambling crap, but you can still kind of see how this dovetails with like doctrine and force building and training and, and all that kind of stuff. Cause it's important to me because like sometimes when I watch uh, star Trek or something like that, they do things that just don't make sense. You know, like the bridge crew, the entire bridge crew beams down to a planet to go fight, I don't know, Cardassians or something like that. And, uh, that doesn't make any damn sense to me. It's like, don't they have ensigns? Don't or not ensigns? Uh, ensigns are an officer. Don't they have like, like I don't know, just able seamen? Don't they have deckhands? Don't they have, you know, chief petty officers? You know, they have, they have none of these. Like everyone's an officer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I don't know, but they do weird stuff. So I, I, I'm just one of those people, I feel like I have to explain this kind of stuff. I have to have a rational explanation. I have to understand why, why it is the way it is. You know, and of course, in the real world, I understand certain doctrinal things about militaries and how they operate and this and that. It's really boring stuff that most people are not interested in. But when I start doing a science fiction story about a military group in science fiction, you know, well, people are going to wonder, like, well, what the hell is this? Why does why does this happen? Why does this do this? Why is this there? And I want to be able to explain it, because I don't know, I'm thorough, or I'm or I'm I don't know, really autistic or something. I don't know. <laughs> I probably am. I've never been diagnosed, but it wouldn't surprise me. Um. So anyhow, yes, a completely unrelated rant <laughs> about. A completely unrelated subject that has nothing to do with the video that you're watching. So, except, except military. It's it's military. So, yeah, that's it. Anyhow, all right. I have gone on for enough. I, If you have listened this long, thank you so much. You are a saint. You have the, you have the patience of a saint. And, uh, I mean, what the hell, you may as well subscribe and like and recommend this video to other people who are probably <laughs> just as into this weird stuff as I am. So, all right. Well, thank you very much for being my attentive audience, and I'll try to make my next video be a little less rambling and weird. But anyhow, um, see you online, and uh, yeah, until then, take care of each other. Thanks again, and... Uh, until later, ciao.